make sure that we get that. Okay. So unfortunately, we missed the uh, the first break shot there. Al McGuain, uh got the lag and, and broke first, but <clears throat> now now we are on. So again, uh, Run Run has the ability to uh, pocket a ball with the best of them, really. I mean, he played uh, some snooker uh, when he was a little younger. Right. Um, but, I mean, as far as, like, manipulating the cue ball, spinning the ball, playing safe, kick shots, bank shots, those types of things, uh, he, he has a lot of work to do on those things. Um, and he has been working on them uh, right. these, these last couple of months. But, um, you know, he, he came into the, uh, the snooker's draft league. I believe he was a five. Um, which translates to right around like a C, C plus, something like that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this session he's uh, competing as a six. Uh, he did really well uh, competing as a five. He was just winning left and right. Um, he's, he's got a really good eye for the eight ball strategy. So, you know, we can't wait to see uh, what Run Run has to offer in uh, in the upcoming uh, tournaments and, and whatnot. But... <clears throat> He has this framework when he's shooting. He likes to bend his front arm right in front of him a little bit. Yeah, he... Uh, and he puts so much power into a lot of his stroke. Yeah, he's just got a really natural, comfortable way of approaching his shots. And... Uh, a little kid. Now, he's just got a natural way of uh, approaching his shots, and he just gets real comfortable. And again... You know, his ability to pocket a ball is unbelievable. It's it's when the table gets a little bit funny and you really got to do something funny where, you know, that that's where you're going to see his speed. Yeah, uh, we're going to see a tester right here where if he makes a good shot, he's going to be right back. Oh, where are you? He played safe. Huh? He's not taking on anything that he uh, he can't handle. And, you know, that's that's something that not many people talk about when they're uh, assessing a player's uh, skill set, you know, just because a player is, say, uh, you know, a C-plus player or whatever, he can't, uh, you know, shoot the ball in and, and draw three rails or whatever you want to call it. He, he doesn't have any, like, extra special moves. Right. Um, just because of that, it doesn't mean that he's not able to compete against some of the better players, and that's based solely on his decision-making. Check I mean, this out. Yeah, he's going with the combination there, and not for nothing... Um, what you want to do, though, you don't want to you won't want to slam this, and you want the three to come off light so that you can hide behind the eight. Yeah. If you don't make it. And I'm I'm pretty sure that he would he would be thinking of that type of uh, type of option. But again, like with his shooting ability and his ability to execute, I kind of like him to make this shot. Like it's just you know I don't want to call him a one trick pony, but you know he's really good at executing. Just make the shot. <clears throat> He's going to get a little fortunate there. Well, it might be safe. He's probably going to roll his cue ball up behind the nine. Unless he wants to shoot it, but it's tough for the pool. Not too far away. Yeah, there you go. There we go. All right, now we can hear you a little yep. better. I want to make sure everybody knows what well, Xavier has to say. Looks like he's shooting. He had the four. You know, that's, uh, that's the second time um, on this table here. Uh, just this last match, we saw someone had a uh, someone had played a safe right off the right off the bat. The table was wide open. Right. Played a safe, successfully got ball in hand, and he immediately played a, a mediocre one nine combination where the table was wide open. And you know we we didn't really agree with that decision over here. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, for all the people. Who who know me from where I grew up and who knew how I grew up. I grew up that if you scratched it on the break, you were about to be kicking at the next shot just yeah, because right. everything was getting you on three or getting you on two. And it, it worked good and it worked bad because it kind of made you control the pace a little bit better mm -hmm. and it rattled the other guy so that when he finally has that open table, he hasn't run out as much. Excuse me one sec. I just got to handle something. No problem. I just made a... Good shot, but you might want to lay up just because it's tough to get on the five. And it's so easy to lay up and get ball in hand. Eh? What? <laughs> See where he's at? Oh, he hit that perfect. Oh. What a nice shot.
I think he just touched the six. He's just making sure that it's not a foul or he lets him know. You're allowed to touch a ball, just not in the process. It's basically the same thing as Jostle. Uh oh. Can I get a whip? Well, seven's tied. So, what to do here? Have a breakout. Let your breakout leaves you with a long shot. Curious. Yeah. Oh, and it broke it out. Oh. From the six to the seven, that's the only problem. It's not really a problem, it's just gotta make it. Got good here. Very nice. And he just has to decide whether he wants to go above or below the side pocket. Above, slow down. Looking good. You just stop it right off the rail. Just gotta make the ball. Very nice shot. Nice out, Al. Oh, spoke too soon. Or did I? Almost put the, almost put the jinx on him. <clears throat> the rack your own portion of this tournament, I've really enjoyed. Just because you don't ever have to feel bad about something happening with a rack, and it allows another point of skill. Of All right, so who else. came down with that rack there? Uh, Al did. Al ran out after uh, run, run, scratch number five. Okay, I remember seeing the scratch there. down into there and put it on the end rail. Hopefully you line up something. We got most of the players. This is actually this wasn't a bad shot. Gonna probably have to come in between the three and the four because three rails is pretty tough. Put it on your hand. Right there. Oh came on too further. Now this is good and it's bad. Or it's, I mean, it's not really that bad, but if you want to play for the run out, everything's all close, but you have a really easy three foul opportunity here because everything came back together. Hey, Keith. Yes, you will. Yes. All right, so. What's that? Oh, yeah, the. Uh, the chat is right over here. Okay. Um, if somebody is in the chat, okay. uh, we can't see what you're writing there. So if you want to say something, we are watching. We're not typing back, but we are watching. Right. And, and, I uh, and I don't know everybody. But for example, yeah, if, if you're out there, you're in the chat, let us know where you are, where you're looking from, where you're watching, right. who you like in the tournament. And we are not betting. So. And no, we are not betting. Unless you're here in person. Right? Yeah, if you're here in person, you guys do whatever you like, but. Good hit. This offers a two way shot. And he 
Executes making the, the ball. Right. Looks like he's going to try to coming off the roll him behind it's the floor ball there. That's good if he makes it real. Good. This is a good shot, too, is you want to hit this with speed because if you hit it too soft, you might get, you probably give him ball in hand. And if you hit it, or if you actually give it some speed, you'll clock that seven ball. And I guess a medium speed here because if you hit it too hard, that two is going to go behind that wall. And he just opened the rack up completely. Yeah. And again, that, that goes right to what I was saying earlier yeah. about his skill set, where he's able to pocket the balls. I got a good. He's able to pocket the balls. Al should, feel, Al should be really out of this rack because he has that seven to control the middle tempo of the rack. And so all he has to focus on is just getting on the six since that nine is right by the side pocket. So just because it's small pockets here, if you play position really well and you play really methodical, you're out from here. So X, what are your uh, what are your feelings on this uh, on this tournament? The turnout, the players in it. What do what do you what do you feel about all this? Well, it got way better for money for from last year. The handicaps. I mean, we we talked about how I'd like some of the older or some of the other players to come in and play. I understand keep I understand the ultimate goal of you don't want everybody raking every tournament. You want somebody to have an opportunity with something like this, but. You see people like Nelson and Shorty, and yeah, and they can't compete. They can't. They yeah. can't. Uh, they can't play in it anymore. Those are you guys that are your idols, and they're just not. They're just not playing. Yeah. You, as far as like for the format, everything. I love the rack your own. I love that there's no. There's no complaining about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they, the uh, uh, the jump cue. I mean, that's that's a choice. Anybody who's running the tournament, and you know. Jump, no jump cue is popular. I mean, it preserves your equipment and stuff, and that's why generally bigger tournaments like Expos or U.S. Opens, they let you use your jump cue because they sell all of that stuff right after they're done with it the first yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I will say, I will say that uh, there is, you know, the uh, the rules for this event have been adapted from uh, the ship to cash stuff. Yep. Um, so that they do, uh, they do utilize all of the ship to cash rules. Uh, the only thing that is not the same is that ship to cash does not do any handicap races. Right. Um, but all of the other rules they have adapted those, and that's basically the you know the general consensus rules and try to even the playing field as far as right. rack your own, alternate break, sit in your chair while the opponent's shooting, and take a break on your turn and and things like that um that that jump cue rule um is is really all about um you know leveling the the playing field just a bit so um just for example um you know you're the c player playing uh, a mediocre safety and you get to block the ball and then you know the other player takes out his little jump cue pops it over it pockets the ball and you, you don't have a prayer so it's like you know, it really no, it's, uh, it's, it's it separates very, it just a bit. The jump cue, I was just watching some in that last rack while he was racking. But, yep. um, the jump cue, it's one of those things that there's so many different rules that are easily defendable from both sides. Yeah. Like, like if I wanted to justify using a jump cue, I'm sure I'd be able to with you. But it ultimately just comes down to a choice with most things. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's handicaps or venues or whatever, like at least somebody's making the choice. And yeah. If... if Lucas doing. I think he uh, he left something at the table there. <laughs> and he pauses and waits for Al to shoot. Yeah. Very classy right there. Classy young man right oh, there. Oh yeah. With that, with that good hair. <laughs> so yeah, Luke, Lucas is a classy young man there. Mm -hmm. He's winning. He is winning. He's winning. He's, he's playing real strong and yeah. doing what he's supposed to do here. Anytime I see him on Facebook, it's never him. It's either his dad is always bragging about him or he's on some some tour website as a top three. It plays good. Might have gotten a piece of that one, but yeah, it looks like he's got some kind of a 
some kind of a hit here. I'm not really sure what he's going to be able to manipulate with it, but just got to be careful of that corner because the harder you hit it, the more it deflects off that ball. So if he hits this with slow speed, it doesn't like that. You don't have to really worry about the scratch. But if you hit that that much harder, that can deflect right into that corner. And he could have gotten stuck on the two or the four. Could have scratched. Now, what do you think? You think Al's going to go offensive here, or do you think he's just oh, going to no. play no, safe think, roll behind the nine ball there? Yep, yep, just stun it, and you want to go two rails, get right in that little nutch right there, right in between the nine and the rail. Now, considering the speed of the table, do you think that one ball is going to come out and No, it's going to be two, it's going to come two rails, or uh, three rails around to the seven. So if you can get behind the nine and put the one behind the seven, then you just double block it. Now, not for nothing. He's eyeing up that he wants to pocket this ball. He's pointing that ball right at the pocket. So. Well, I mean, if you hit it with speed, watch come around the table. And yeah, that was not what he was looking to do there. No, but look, he might get in that spot. <laughs> no, going right by. Yeah. I'm gonna say that's an odd way to play that safe, but hey, mm -hmm. whatever works, right? Mm -hmm. So. Run, run back to the table. Yep. Yeah, and you're going to notice with me that I'm always I'm looking for the bailout, especially with a tight box table and you're a lower handicap. Any advantage that you can get with ball in hand to set up some kind of a 1-9 combo, oh, most it, definitely. it hurts that much more when you get that rack early so that they have that much more. You're getting that much more of a spot, it feels like. Absolutely. Yep. So how, how did you like that one ball pocket there? That was good. He played it perfectly. He just... He might have looked a little quick for my taste, just for his tempo. Seems yeah. Like he got down and shot the two pretty quick. So, something that I've learned about him is that, um, excuse me one sec. Right up the table. He's on the rail. He's just going to get saved uh, back. Boy, for everybody back home, Samut is up 6-2-2 two, two against Dev, and it's Samut's break. So, uh, as I was saying about uh, about Run Run here, uh, something I know about him and I've come to learn is that he uh, he really likes to play the game, and he enjoys it just like, you know, a little kid would enjoy playing a game. Oh, so, yeah, he but... doesn't... Um, you know, he doesn't necessarily play certain uh, shots with like that, you know, hey, uh, I want to kill this guy. He's not as serious about certain yeah. things. He, he, he really enjoys playing the game. So uh, some of what you're going to see from his demeanor is going to show that. Um, yeah, but know, again, you know. I know to, a lot of us want that bag, that yeah. feeling. I'm just, yeah. I just, just want to I just want to play, right. Okay. Now let's see if he can come with some kind of a kick shot. See, he's he's not able to go one rail to this two ball no or two rails uh back and forth only because you know, he's corner hooked there there's one thing that i haven't seen a lot of and that's taking fouls um just from most of the c players is the only thing i was playing when i was playing billy last night i was gambling billy last night he probably took eight fouls on a race to seven mm -hmm. just tying stuff up right here is tough just because you're what? deep in the jaws but you know if you can if you can put that six over no you can't really put the six over excuse me one second no problem i don't know it's a tough spot you want to go jump cue would help here but looks like he's going to mass a so close wish he didn't hang it Be careful with that seven ball there. <laughs> yeah, Billy the Kid serenading. Oh, look at this. That was unexpected. Looks like he's getting away with it, though, but it looks like he's going to get safe. Unless, I wish I had Mike DeMarco here, because I don't know whether he banks this ball or plays safe. 
You are going to notice, though, that as the time goes on in individual matches, people start to tighten up. They start to they start to feel those pockets a little bit, and the safe starts feeling way easier. See, well, he went after it, and it's getting over. Right out in the open. Cut in the side, or you can go all the way down. Probably take your, probably take the cut in the side. So make sure you don't. Oh, he did take it. He in took the on a shot. And he nice executed. shot. Very nice. You know he plays nice with a shot by Plays Alan with Blake. a super skinny Z shaft too. That's an incredible shot. And then the same shooter. Same shooter, Shoot. and he's gonna get his hook par partial eclipse. Camera six there. Right there. Uh, I'm gonna see him jack up and try to masse here. This is my favorite, one of my favorite shots because of the lightning bolt, that 12 ounce jump cue. Oh yeah, pop right over. So I bet you would be favored to uh, say, "Hey, I would like jump cues allowed." Well, I mean, I bought one. I don't want to waste my money. He's like, I <laughs> bought one for a reason, pal. <laughs> <clears throat> no, it's everything's gonna have its rules, and you gotta adjust with any rule of any tournament. You're not going to play 10 ball like you're going to play 9 ball, and you're not going to play a tournament with jump cues like you're going to play without one. Yeah, you know? right. Totally the, with you there. The Joss Tour is a great example of that, because if you look at how how well somebody like Jason Shaw or Dennis Hatch jumps, yeah, and you take that away from them, that's, that's yeah, it, huge. Yeah, it definitely does. I, I feel like when it's uh, a higher level tournament, right. you're supposed to kind of say anything goes, you know, bring this. whatever you want, make Red it happen. Legs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when when you're playing at the high level of play, even top amateurs, if you're playing like an A player tournament, even you know, B high Bs, you know, I, I feel like jump cues uh, are okay in that sense. Right. But uh, when you're incorporating those low low level players, right. a lot of them still already feel like they don't very nice have, a, have right an there. opportunity to compete. But um, you know, you got to give a little bit of that uh, that favor to those guys. Yeah. And all this stuff is all this stuff is gorgeous. Like all of these all these gold crowns, I play in gold crowns back in Union Station, and they're very nice. They're really nice too. But you know, you have the the brass, all um, the brass caps on all the sides. Everything's extremely rigid. It doesn't want to move or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's you know, if you want to keep it that way, then little things like jump cues or the the cloth when you break stuff like that. I mean, the reason they do it is because it's true. Yeah, exactly. People just might not be happy that they get a, another skill that they have to use. I know I use a jump cues eight times in a race to seven. So. Oh, man. <laughs> I like this that. A, he's a tester. This is most definitely a tester. He's going to be shooting from way up top, yep. almost on the rail. I'm like That's just like I said before, when he made that uh, that three ball right down the rail, he's, he shoots with a really thin shaft, so... I think uh, in this case here, correct me if you disagree, hmm? uh, I think he should be aiming to the high side of the, the corner pocket oh, yeah, and just rolling it. No spin. Don't try to throw it in. Just aim the ball to the top side of the corner pocket there and let the drag of the cue ball just kind of pocket it. See, he's aiming towards the center of the pocket. Yeah, I'd, be, want, I'd be aiming towards the top of the corner there. Aiming, uh, you mean to the right, right? Not towards the foot rail, to the side rail, right? I, I'm, I'm talking about to the long rail there and, and allow the drag of the cue ball coming across the, the nine yeah, ball we, there to pull it into the pocket. He made it. And so. he made that. Nice. With with the outside English. So he's 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 yeah. definitely comfortable with that shaft he's playing with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to, to be able to make that shot like that, he's, yeah. he's definitely comfortable. Oh, he, he keeps bringing that shaft everywhere he goes, but it's a it's a Z shaft, but he tuned it down even more, so it's about, like, 12 and a quarter. Oh, it's, man. It's, a, it's really a needle, but he he tried using a regular 314.3, and... He traded it the same day that he tried it, so. Yeah, he wasn't into it, huh? Oh, no. Some people are like, though, like Ernesto and Oscar Dominguez. Mm -hmm. They, You don't notice it, but their stuff is really thin because they like snooker. Al's just from Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> Al's from Buffalo. <laughs> That's his special power. <laughs> What's your special power? I'm from Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And we all know what that means, yeah. don't we? 
I have oh. no idea what that means, but Al, is, Al would yeah. Al would know. He's actually super excited right now because he's paid his entry for Curly's tournament, for this tournament, mm -hmm. and for the and for Turning Stone. So his next few events, they're all paid for. He just has to show up. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's always a good thing knowing that you don't have to do anything other than show up. Yeah, and you're free rolling. Yeah. So uh, it was just brought to my attention that the uh, the top three players from last year, of the top three players from last year, there's only one player left of those top three. Minnetella? Uh, no, it would be Mr. Tim Perry, the buzzsaw. The buzzsaw uh, no is the only one left of the top three from last year's Bud Classic. Who informed you of that? Tim Perry no, himself. Okay. <laughs> it's like, hey, uh, I'm the only one left from the last year's top group. What side is he on? He's on the B side. Oh. He's on the B side. He's another one though. You look, you see him on Facebook. It's always first, third. Took the cash. Yeah, beating Chris Leal like. Yeah, he's he uh, to. he's a he's a favorite uh in oh. a lot of tournaments, um, only because he just has that super super grind mode. Oh. Um, he uh, he won the uh the ship to cash king of the hill. Uh, tournament. I played in that. Yes, you did. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of that format? Oh, I love that. That was so fun. I didn't do well, but I had a. It was such a blast playing in a ring game like that. I mean, really taking. A, I don't know. You, it's 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 uh, constantly very. That's unfortunate. But it's constantly varying, you know, because you're not gonna play like take two players that you look at out here. I'm gonna play Sweet Money the same way that I'm gonna play Lucas. Most people would say I'd play the table, and. Right, it's, but it, it's, it's always an own. adjustment. Yeah, you know well, you which can, options you can leave for them and yeah. which ones you can't. Yeah, but that was it was awesome. Plus, it was just really different. You know, some of the people you didn't expect. You know, like Keith ran over me and um, Kevin Baccio. Yeah, right. And, and that was that was definitely showing something <laughs> there. I mean, the format is definitely unique, and that's something that I really want to do with everything. Uh, you know, just explore our options and not just stick to a. This. Only oh. thing we do is one on one, and it's eight ball, nine ball, or ten ball. You know, like I want right. to do other stuff. Uh, we were talking with uh, Ray McNamara earlier, and uh, we said that. Uh, one two. Yeah, how about that? Mrs. Cash. Mrs. Cash. <laughs> Mrs. Cash. Not wow! Look at that. Did you see that? Wow, that was he just fantastic. Kick, cut that into the side and got shaped. Unbelievable. Same shooter, folks. Oh, he played a safe. You know he didn't you know he didn't miss that after the last kick shot. We have the Wow. Wow, that is. Oh, that's my fault. I just looked over. I thought he pinned him to the five. Gets the ball in hand. This is one of those things. The only problem in this track, you just have to make sure you don't get straight on the seven. I can and have your you... attention real quick, please. I have two vehicles that need to be moved. Uh, we have a spot for you, but you, you need to go to the front, talk to Paul real quick. He's going to show you where you need to move to. Uh, Massachusetts registration 22. A four eight seven two two eight four eight seven Massachusetts and New Hampshire A N I C A F E and New Hampshire registration A N I C A F E could you please go to the front? This is the only shot. Let's talk to Paul. He's uh, like he's right going there forward. Shirt and tie. Top left. What? Wow. Looks like I was wrong. It's not bad here, it's just you want to hit this soft, that way if you miss it, it comes back up and you hide your other nine. Just like that. It's very nice. I got a little out. Out of line here. We have an easy safety. We have a bank. This is all his choice. We have a two-way shot. Looks like he's going. Going hard. Oh, what a shot, and... Wow, fantastic wow. cut there. 
That really is showing his ability to pocket a ball. Wow. I was just saying right. before you came back, he had every choice in the world to just shoot cut right there. Just cut everything. Yeah. Just cut it, cut it, cut it. Oh. All right, Kevin Brule took down his last match. Big ups to Kevin Brule. Nice, Kevin. Our players, table number six, Pete Bowman, Len Cumbo. Pete Bowman, Len Cumbo. That's on table six. The other way? Table four. The one that oh. shows two. All right, and it yeah. looks like Al's going to come up dry. But I'm going to give you a quick peek down the run here. All right, so we got Samut versus Dev, and Samut is up 8 to 2, or 9 to 2. Then we have uh, Dennis Levet playing Carey. It looks like somebody is up 7 to 2. Not really sure. I can't really see their facial expressions, so. Oh, and Carey's pretty, pretty neutral when he's sitting. Well, they both look disappointed with that shot there, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure I could make a call there. Right. Uh, back right. to the action. Run Run's looking to make something happen with this. Playing the one pocket shot, and is he going to get safe? He's not going to get safe, nope. but he's not going to sell out a, a direct shot. Well, he's about to either be safe, or Al's going to go after the bank shot. I think that eight ball might... might eh, no, he's got a clear bank. Oh, he's got the safe. He elected Whoa. to play safe, and he makes That's the combination. Hopefully he played a bad safe right there. Oh. Wow, he almost stabbed the nine ball with I that shot. I didn't even see the nine ball over there. That's Al might have seen it. No wonder he wears yellow. He <laughs> shoots the one and the nine like a king. What's wrong with yellow? Well, it matches the one and the nine. You got the extra juice. Mm -hmm. What yellow is good for? Up in your insurance. That's what it is. What do you do here? Xavier, excuse me one second. I just got to deal with something real quick. Um, Thank hold, you. Hold down the port. actually want that ball behind the nine and you're taking away all the pass looks like he's trying to mess up that five I just talked about this though but, um, about people taking fouls the only problem here is you got to realize that you can't clump too much together otherwise you're gonna get safe you're gonna put on three but right here I was gonna try and put this right by the four that way, when he kicks at it, he's going to be picking at two balls. Uh, he got a little separation there, so the one's by itself, but there's nothing within a foot of that ball, and he's got a better chance than not of getting the ball in hand here. Is there a 50 in there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mutt one, ten to two. Yeah, it'll be, put them on two. Now what you want to do here is you want to figure out how to use that four ball. And you want to put that one ball way up beyond the one, beyond the nine and the five. If he draws back here, the only problem is, gotta watch that one ball. That is very, very good. Wow. And to boot, he got it right next to another ball. It's like, he got him on three, but looks like Run Run got a little frustrated. Uh, try not to mess up anything. There we go. Let's 
score is four to one. Oh, well, run run looks like he's smiling a little bit. That's almost good. safe on two rails or I mean, you really have a choice left or right left you're not going to give up a shot right you might clip it too thick I told everyone so I wanted all you guys to make sure that you guys knew that he won Next time you see him, though, make sure you ask him how good Al McGuane plays. Because I'll beat him 8 to 1 or 2. But I don't think it makes a difference. And Mike is back. What a nice shot. Is he going to get up in there? There we go. Gave himself the best chance to get on this five if the five goes by, though. I must go by the six. Let's check it out. Definitely don't play this with speed. Nice move. Oh, prove me wrong again. See, right here, I probably would have drawn back a little bit more. Just so I'm a little closer to my work, but... Let's see if he makes up for it. Uh-oh. Get some wheels. Get some wheels. Oh, well, turned out okay. We'll see what happens. Just so you guys know, I am not rooting for Al. I'm rooting for good play, runouts. Looks like somebody was right behind the shot. All right, the ghost has returned once again. I was looking to roll this right into that side pocket there. Well, rolling it ris is risky. There we go. Perfect. Very nice shot. Nice execution by Al McGuane. And he's going to take a 5-1 to one lead here. I'll tell you, folks, Al McGuane is really showing something here. Uh, Samot has defeated Dev. I told him that. And we also had Mike Minicello over Ed Dirk. Uh, okay. Who won with Jared Damalian? Um, I don't know who he was playing. Apparently that just ended. Looks like Jared. Jared, what's the word? I got that. Jared, Jared Damalia is victorious. Who was he playing? He was playing Peter Kramer. Hey. So that is the outcome there. Have you seen Rich Minicello's senior have you seen his uh his cue he brought out his old robinson no i haven't seen it oh it's beautiful he um it's like a little side story but rich rich minicello um mike minicello and rich senior rich bought three robinson cues and they all i think drew cards or flip coins to see who picked one, the first one and mike won the first one and that's where he got that black robinson cue really what was the score over there, Jim? Okay. Okay. No, that's okay. Jimmy Prather just won 8-4. to four. Jim Prather over Rob Deal. Oh, playing Rob Deal. Rob Deal. All right. And 
Ooh. I need to be excused one more time very quickly. <laughs> Looks like Al is getting on a roll here. Something needs to happen or run run needs to slow him down. This is where I was talking about the safety play, how it comes into pretty helpful. Okay. Slowing somebody down like this, I mean, they're either going to slow themselves down or you need to slow them down. Excuse me one second, folks. I'll be right back. Wow. That is unbelievable. It's always something that you look out for, but you never believe that you can actually scratch like that. That is so unfortunate. There's probably like seven scratches like that that everybody knows are just typical scratches. And if you don't pay attention to them this one time, you can take advantage. But this is an opportunity for, for Run Run to get back in. I mean, really the score is five to four going to eight. See, that's the beauty of a tight box is that things can sway so, so much. Really quickly, too. They can also slow down really quick, too, if they start getting into a real safety battle. But it's not looking like, I mean, we've seen one three foul, but nobody's looking for that to be their primary weapon. Got Tim Perry playing Ryan Stevens. Pete Bowman, I'm not sure who he's playing. Older gentleman. Still hasn't gotten the score back on the Dennis Levesque, but I'm going to keep an eye out on it right now. Five to two. Let's look at how he delivers a two through the ball. Really solid. Shot by Al. There were so many balls down there that could have been used as a stopper. It's one thing that I always try and uh, I always try and teach people is that if you see balls that line up, like you see these four balls, the eight, five, six, and nine, if you can make a path to get behind that, it almost forms like a wall that you can hide behind, and that position to get safe become. There's so many positions to become safe. Somebody showed me. That's a very nice hit. Stop them. Somebody once showed me an infrared picture of what it looks like with sights. If you take the cue ball and you see from a top down view, it'll show you where the ball is actually safe or where you need to spin it and stuff like that. And when you put balls in a row, you create so many dark areas on the on the table that people cannot I mean really they they have a lot of trouble getting around on that and when you're kicking around a lot of balls like that that ball is more likely to get stopped when you kick it back up and you're more likely to sell out blabber right here you need to make a choice you need to pick six you need to pick the nine or you need to pick the six Still has the choice, he just needs to go half here, you're gonna end up half position. Yep, in between, you have to make the ball. Happens all the time. Now he needs to make a decision. He's probably gonna wanna go for the 6-9. A lower handicap player will usually tend to try and take an easier route out. And it's not necessarily the wrong way to go here, either. 
All right, I have returned. How are we doing over here, X? Well, I was trying to. I was explaining them. There were three ball, or there were four balls that were in a row in a diagonal path, and Al used the cue ball to go behind him. But I was trying to explain to him this thing that I saw recently, where uh, they're showing they're trying to promote playing safeties, and it was an infrared view of where the camera could, or of where the 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 cue ball could actually see. So when you lined up balls that were like in a row, they'd be mm -hmm. a foot apart, but you lined them up straight, mm -hmm. it formed these black areas behind where you hit behind, and it actually created a big surface area for you to land where you're actually safe. That was a really good shot. How about that one? Yeah, went full throttle at it. Run, run. Taking right. another game, making it 5-3. Saying, an even race. hey, Al, guess what? This isn't going to be as easy as you thought it was. I'm going to give you a run for that cash. Right. So on our on our neighboring table, uh, table two, we have Ran Tamba, Ranoff Tamba, and he's matching up with Chris Leal, Keystone. He's about to break the first rack of that match, so that's going to be a good one. Uh, we just put up another match in the corner there. Uh, got Kevin Brule playing Ed Dirk. He's still rolling in the tournament. Um, I'm not sure what the result of table three was with Kerry McAuliffe and Dennis Levesque, but it looks like there's only I think seven beads up there, so I'm going to go ahead and say that Dennis took that one. I'm going to say that, too, because Kerry usually keeps his stuff out the whole day unless he eats or something, and he put his stuff right away. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree there. Yeah, he's not coming over to tell me so. Was that B-side or... Yes, that is uh, that is a B side match. Yep. That is B side. And Run Run actually beat Terry, so. It's good though, I mean you know, Dennis won eight to three. It wasn't maybe the spot comes into play early as far as psychologically or something, but you know, this is a this is a tournament where you don't have to be an A to win. Wow, we're setting up here for the the fight tonight. Pretty incredible what they all the stuff that they got. It just comes out like a bunch of worker ants. Just You're not kidding. Yeah. I looked over to the left and all of a sudden we didn't have pool tables here anymore. That was a good shot right here. Right here, you know, you can play for an easy safety and that might slow run run down a little bit too. But that was a good shot right there. That was a rack winning shot. He needs to win this rack too because it's gonna be a it's gonna be a six rack swing. He's gonna have lost the last three racks if he doesn't get out of here. And all three of them were due to unforced errors. So he needs to bear down with these it's really just the eight ball. He's got one more shot that he really needs to make. And if he makes this shot well, it'll make it that much easier for him to get there. And but, he kind of flung it at that. Well, he's about to get lucky. So. And no. Well, he can... Run Run can make that ball. No. He can make that ball. The angle that if you look on that overhead there, you can see that all he's got to do is just play a little bit of outside English, and he's going to cut that seven ball right in there. A little bit of throw, and that ball's going right in. You know what else he could do? He could play a four-rail safety and not have to worry about a thing, and the seven ball will go behind the nine. Yeah, that's definitely an option. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's uh, comfortable shooting that type of shot. He's not really familiar with the rails, but maybe he's learning some things, you know? Yep. Like I said, he's, he's real good at one thing, and that's cut a ball, and so... He played for the bank. That's what he wants to do. Oh, was I still on the top camera? Oh, that's all right. And right here is where we really, really would want to see some kind of a safety shot here. Well, he's and he, he went all out trying to, trying to get there. But that is kind of fortunate, though, because, yeah. you know, Al's not really on the right side of the eight ball, so... You go up table or I think he's going to try to try to play a safe in, in some way here. Well, I think yeah, he's just going to bank the eight near the set, near the nine ball and try to roll yeah. up table. That's a shot I know he's comfortable with, and uh, 
you can't really do too much wrong there. Well, the most important, you have to pick, I don't know, it's, it's all preference. My stress for this, I would rather have that cue ball on the rail and just not in the pocket. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm, I'm well, like, I'm, I'm, I'm easy. I don't mind leaving you a nine-foot straight shot on a tight box and you're making it one out of nine times. But because right here, although he might not have a shot, you can use any English you want to manipulate the ball. But he played a safe. I didn't see that safety, but it was dead. All right. All there right. Is. This is pretty good, too, for a mass there if he... If you can't see, oh, you can see it. Yeah, it looks like he can cut it right in yeah. there. And played you it avoid. with the right English, too. Yeah, that's nice okay. Shot, Al. That's nice shot. Come back strong. Uh, who's, the, who's the gentleman playing um, Pete? Oh, that is Len Cumbo. Okay. So you go, is he a C or B? He is a C-class player. He's still rolling. And Al McGuain taking that one down. Six to three over Run Run Sue. Two three race. We got Sweet Money playing Jimmy Prather. Sweet Money's an A, be going to ten. Jimmy's a B, going to eight. So Run Run's got the break here, and we have a three to two race. Yeah, that was a that was a big shot. Three two race. Was do you think Run Run was trying to shoot at that, or do you think he was trying to? You know, I'm not really sure. I mean, again, his uh, you know, his choices and his thought process are definitely going to be uh, you know, not consistent. I I gotta say. Mm -hmm. Um, again, he can pocket a ball unbelievably, but his decisions in, you know, his ability to do those other touchy things, those funny, uh, funny situations, those are going to be kind of hit or miss. And that's just because, you know, he doesn't have the experience with the games, for one. And, and two, uh, he just, he doesn't have that skill set just yet. But we're definitely going to be seeing him uh, getting into that realm. If he aimed like a half a tip inward on that one ball. X, excuse me one second. I gotta handle some. He would stop that cue ball. Watch it. He pops over to the left. That was perfect. That was a lot better than the last one. Corner ball went. Just some distance. That's about the only thing. Right here, if you can set yourself up, you can set yourself up for a two-way shot with that nine ball. You can come around and not hit that four, or even hit the four and come back out. But it's like you get a little lucky here, though. Might have left the edge of the top.
this lines up. Doesn't look like it. We left the three. It's like the only. It's like the only real problem is the four to the six. Once again, it's not really a problem. It's just the only difficult part of this rack. It looks like he's a little off angle here too. So come two rails or. How are we looking over here, X? Well, he either has to come back or forward. But he needs to go right here. And he's, his only real problem is get, is right here. It's the only real work that he has to do. Yeah, if he gets on the six, he's looking yep. pretty good. Like Just like you said, though. Wow. Pockets it like Yeah, he butter. doesn't even flinch at the shot itself. It makes it look like a bucket But table. that position there, that fast rail got him, and it just plugged him right in the side pocket. Yeah. That's a, that's a shame, so that was a good shot. And he was, if he had hit a rail as opposed to going in the drink, he's coming right back over. It looks like Al's gonna pray off of this. All he has to do is just make this straight in ball. And I, I did it to him. I don't believe in the curse. Or the jinx, or whatever you want to call it. I don't believe in that. And even race. Race to two. It's like the original ship to cash tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> Only we do not have triple elimination if you include the buyback here. I wish we did. That would be pretty cool. I would be still in. He's like, I'd still be in because <laughs> I would have bought back. <laughs> so here we go. We got a 6-4 game here. And this is a tight one. Race to two now. And the four ball does not drop. That is going to be another dry break for Mel McGuane. But the two is in that worst spot on the table. Unless, unless it... Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, it's in a bad spot. It's just in that spot where you can't crush the nipple, and... I mean... I think he's just going to have to play this, uh, you know... Uh, so, you know, a little high outside and roll himself above the two and just try to roll into, into there, try to get down to the corner, but... You mean in between the four and the two? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it looks like he's going to stroke it over there, but with the fast table, I don't... Look at this, like... look at this. Wow. Even better. Wow. Very nice shot. Fantastic. How about that? Wow. Now, from here... I'm thinking his only avenue to get out here is going between the seven and the nine with the cue ball, try to play the three in the side pocket. Yeah, I mean, as long as you get speed. Wow, he hung it though. He got good on the three too. He did. That's a, look at the rest of the rack too. The only problem he would have is a five to the six. Oh, heartbreak. You know, Slow. something that uh, you got to take into account here is just where the fatigue is setting with these two guys. Oh, we've been here all day. And that doesn't look like it's going to go. That looks fatigued right there. It's playing a little too quick for this table's uh, liking, so well, he's, he's going to have I mean, to slow down a good, just a bit. It's one thing I like about playing now is that he has a pace. He has a good pace. So, yeah, I agree. I, I like playing at a, at a uh, I don't mm -hmm. want to call it a fast pace, but a, a decent play, pace. Yeah. It, it's, you know, you're not sitting there watching a guy, you know, Absolutely. take 10 minutes per shot. Uh, you know what you have to look at. You make your decision and you execute. Slow That's down. It. Better slow down. I think he's okay there. It's just he's got some work to do to get there for the six. Shouldn't really. I think take. he's going to come with something fantastic here. And right here is where we're going to see the difference here. Here's the I'd like to see him roll up onto the eight ball, put the six ball underneath, but he's definitely going to do that. But again, you see the execution there. I mean, he got safe, but that was not the ideal way to a, go about that. Yeah. And, you know. Those are things that he's gonna gonna be working on, and I think he's gonna be a serious competitor uh, when when he gets those things down. I'm 
McGuane kicking. Good. Wow. wow. Made the shot. Can't get better. Can't have a better kick. The shot mean, that was such There's always though. a better shot. However, <laughs> in that situation, I like it. What if he made the nine? Is that the best shot? It's got to be. Do this. Uh oh. More luck. Uh oh. And. Well, let me just say this. At least he should. If he blasts this into the rail and it four rails into the same corner, hey, you deserve it, bro. I've been reading too much banking with a beard. Banking with a beard. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's reading that. Uh, he went for the cut, and he uh, he he got good though. I mean, I I mean this is run run here. Oh, didn't travel nearly. I think uh, I think the cue ball is going to be traveling here for sure. But as far as pocketing the ball, I kind of like him to just cut it. <laughs> oh yeah. He might play safe, but no, please please. What's this? Like I said, he's just extremely good at pocketing balls. Well, so. he might be going into the nine if he makes it though. Look at that. No. Nope. Right in. Perfect. Oh, still got a shot to make. That's why I say it's like it's almost a guarantee that, that he's going to pocket shot. the ball when he's got something like that. But now this shot, just make sure you overcut it and you can't really do much wrong. There you go. And there it is. Okay. Nice run, shot. run, Sue. On Gets the to the hill. Down only one game versus Al McGuane. And we got ourselves a match here. Al's got to come with something here. It looks like he's getting a little... A little uh, lackadaisy, you know. Here's my prediction for the last rack. I think that Al is going to at least try and get him on two, or at least try and get him on three about two times the next rack. Really? You think he's going to be playing safe? Because at this point, you're playing the lower handicap. Why why ruin the rest of the set by hanging a eight ball or a nine ball or something like yeah, that? Don't. When, when you can putt around with the one or the two. Excuse me one sec. got to watch a hit. Start off. You can see it. Makes it. Makes the ball, but he kind of hooks himself here. This is where you need to take a minute. And you need to. And the verdict is, the hit was no good. Look at the time. Look at no this way. shot. Look no at this way. shot. It's in. Wow. 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 How about that? And we have a hill, hill, we have a hill, hill match. That's one of the most disgusting feelings that you can ever feel is you had your man safe. And next thing you know, he's breaking hill, hill. Yeah, that's, uh, oh. that's pretty insane. Look at this. Uh-oh. So we're going to see Look where the stars one. line. Look at how off that rack is. Yeah, it looks like that rack is a little, uh, a little twisted there. We're going to see if see, that two ball goes in. Twisting the rack for nine ball doesn't do much, but... Look at that too. You know, not for nothing. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that that rack was twisted, and that two ball was square into the hole there. I wasn't looking for that. I just saw it <laughs> when it was that six looked really far off on the back ball. Yeah. I mean, it's a great break. No, but you know what? You're absolutely right. That rack was twisted there. Yeah. Now, if we wanted to talk about racking, I mean, we got. Yeah, that is that. that is definitely <laughs> not uh, not something that we want to see. Now, what's the I didn't I didn't check on it, but I didn't do it. A lot of places are adapting the whole don't touch the rack after the rack's on it. Yeah, we, 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 we adapted that thing there. Yeah. Uh, when when the level of play is uh, lower, right. uh, you know, we tend to not do that. But because um, I mean, should... like people, somebody like Shorty, his whole thing is it's a skill just like anything else. And a lot of people consider it cheating if you if you happen to know some have some knowledge. Well, about no, the rack. Uh, Ray and I were talking about that yeah. uh, a little earlier and. Basically, the the deal is this: um, you should know what you're looking at, yep. and understand why you need a tight rack and what that you know does for you and what that's going to incorporate. Yep. But it it doesn't give you the green card to go ahead and manipulate the rack right. to your advantage. That's not what that's supposed to be for. And the re that was that was a really nice shot, though. Very very good fundamentals right there. Um, the the big thing about the rack though is is that you can't you can't brush it off like it's a small issue because when you do get to that level just like you said where you have the 
the A class players. You know, a break like this with with an A level player on the hill, you know, not to not to say that he meant to tilt the rack or anything like that. Yeah, but right. If you, but if you knew to knew to do that, that's do you consider that as cheating the rack, or do you th consider that Listen, that he used the skill? If you're doing something, yep. that uh, it's a good shot too. Is, is giving yourself an advantage. Yep. Um, as far as uh, you know, tilting the rack. Yep. Tilting uh, the rack, I think, is unacceptable. Yes. If you uh, I tilting actually... the rack is definitely something that I would say is illegal. Yep. Um, also, something as far as uh, look at run run here. He's about to. You know, something as far as uh, nice you know, um, and run run taking it down. Taking it down. Run run two. Wow. Comes up with it. Six okay. games to seven. Run run over Al McGuane. And wow. again, we are what at a, the eighth annual <laughs> Bud Classic, Budweiser Classic at Snookers in Providence, Rhode Island. Five thousand dollars guaranteed first prize. And what a beautiful room this is. Oh, man. That bar right there is going to be packed with people tonight. There's going to be four four layers of people. Oh yeah. Just trying to get there. Over here, this is our private party room. Uh, we run tournaments in that room also, but you can section it off one tables, uh, one table, two tables, you name it. And then this is our main tournament room where we're hanging at right now. If you look from where you see right there, we're about three feet up and to the right. And up and to the right. Yeah. So coming up next, we got Sam up Sam Austin. and Austin Roberts. My boy. So we're going to end this recording, and we're going to be back shortly. So be right back. <laughs> 